All right, good to be back. I was off for a couple of days. I took the family and kids to Legoland and we had a blast. We had a lot of fun, but unfortunately good times must come to an end. Back to reality. A lot of you were wondering what I was. I did mention that I will be away from August 11th to August 16th on a family trip to Legoland. I promised the kids I would take them before school starts. Uploads will resume when I'm back. But I guess not everyone reads community posts. I want to thank each and every one of you who wished me a good time or left a positive comment. We have 236 comments on this post. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Scott Horn. Thank you, Jay Litka, Unix Code, Stream Tech, Dad Does, so on and so forth. I cannot go over all the names, but I did read every single comment. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I know a lot of you missed the uploads, the videos, but I'm back. I'm actually back to find a lot of things I need to take care of. Number one, I came and found a huge pile of packages, 145 packages that we need to unbox, enter in the system, and fix. I came to find two PayPal disputes. They called in to ask questions. Nobody answered, even though we had an automated voice message that stated we're going to be off from August 11th to August 16th but they ignored the message and they filed a PayPal dispute. We had locals that came to pick up and they found a note on the door that we're going to be back on August 16th. This is a family business. I work here, my wife, my dad, big boss, my uncle, who was also off because I told him to take off during my time off. He cannot do anything without me and I cannot do anything without him. My dad was the only person in the shop and he was the one who was fulfilling e-commerce orders. So that's what happens when I take a few days off to relax. I have to work twice as hard to make up for that time. But what can you do? What can you do? Today we're going to be working on a MacBook Air. And I had it here a few minutes ago, right here. The laptop does power on, but it boots to a folder logo. Let me show you what I mean. I already disassembled the board. Right now, the only thing I have connected onto the board is the LCD and the I.O. board, the DC board. Let me go ahead and plug the charging cable and see what happens. Charging cable is plugged in. We do see the green light. We do see the orange light. And after a few seconds, we do not need to push on the power button. After a few seconds, the laptop is going to turn on. Okay, and it booted to a folder logo. Folder logo indicates that the motherboard is not able to read from the drive. So the first thing I did was try another SSD drive. We have a lot of them in the shop, and I have a bunch of them here. And all of them, they have an operating system installed on them. El Capitan, High Sierra, Mojave, so on and so forth. So I tried ours, and same result. The laptop is booting to a folder logo. So right now, we know the problem is not the hard drive, and of course, it's not the software, because we did try our own hard drive that has a pre-installed software, and same result. Where should we start? The first thing I want to do is look at the SSD connector, which is located right here. That's where the SSD plugs in. Okay, right here. I want to look at this connector and see if there's anything obvious around the connector. Maybe liquid damage, maybe rust, maybe corrosion, maybe a blown component, maybe a ripped off component, a burned component. And I do not see any of that. Of course, we cannot check for a short circuit by just looking at components. But right now, I'm just doing a visual inspection to see if there's anything obvious. Maybe the board suffered liquid damage, and there's an obvious component that is corroded or blown that we can replace. But right now, I do not see anything obvious. I may be moving a bit too fast for some viewers, but I'm not doing this so we can check component by component. I'm just doing this quickly so we can see if there's anything obvious on the board. Let's flip the board. And nothing obvious. The board is clean. Edges look clean. And the board 
looks mint. Nothing obvious. So where should we start? Why is the motherboard not seeing the SSD drive? We cannot solve the issue by just looking at the board. We have to open up the schematic and board diagram. And I have the schematic open right here. And I do have the board diagram opened right here. I'm going to start with the board diagram. The first thing I want to do is check the SSD connector on the board diagram right here. And on the right side, we have the labels for each pin. And we can tell that pin 1 to pin 5 should have 3.3 volts. 3v3 right here pin 1 2 3 4 5 should have 3.3 volts right now I'm not sure if those pins are receiving 3.3 volts so what I'm going to do is plug the charging cable so the board turns on and we're gonna check those pins to see if we have any voltage there because if the connector is not receiving any voltage then of course it's not gonna read the SSD drive Okay, so I have the multimeter here, and let's see what readings we get on pin 1 to pin 5, meter in voltage mode, and let's test pin number 1, and the meter is reading 0, 0.0 volts. We do not have any voltage on pin 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. We should have 3.3 volts here. So that's why the motherboard is not able to communicate with the SSD drive. That's good. That's a good first step. So let's click on pin number one. I want to see where this connector connects to or what components connects with this connector. The blue dots that you see are just vias and not actual components. If we flip the board, the SSD connector is connecting with this inductor, with this capacitor. And what else? and this resistor. So let's start with this inductor, L3700. We're going to open up our schematic and we're going to look for L3700. Right here, L3700. Okay, PP3V3, SOSW, SSD. Right now, I did not test voltage at that inductor, but there's a 99% chance that the inductor is good. So let me plug the charging cable again, and I want to test 3.3 volts at the inductor at L3700. And the inductor should be somewhere over here, right there. Based on the board diagram, that's the inductor, L3700. Let's go ahead and test the inductor. I have the charging cable plugged in, as you can see. We do see an orange light. And let's measure. Do we have 3.3 volts here? Our meter is in voltage mode. And I'm going to test both ends of the inductor. The inductor should be continuous. So I'm reading 0 volts on one end. And I'm reading 0 volts on the other end. Okay. So we know the problem is not the inductor. And we know that we have 3.3 volts missing at the inductor. Now let's go back to the schematic right here. And we want to see where this is coming from. What makes this? What makes this? Right here, 3.3 volts SSD switch. So this chip is what makes it. Let's go ahead and look at this chip, U8070. Search for U8070. And where is this chip located? Oh, right next to the inductor. Right next to L3700. What I want to do is I want to click on that chip. And on the right side, we can tell that pin number one is PP3V3 underscore S5. And we have the enable signal on pin number two. So let's go ahead and check for PP3V3 S5, and that's pin number one, bottom right, 
and we do have it look at the multimeter 3.3 volts and now we're going to check for our power enable and we need power enable in order for the chip to function and look at the multimeter zero volts so we are missing power enable so let's go back to our board diagram pin number two is power enable now we're going to click on pin number two and see what components are connecting with pin number two that's the easiest way to go at it and we see that this component is connecting with pin number two this chip this chip and those two resistors this and this that's it for this side of the board if we flip the board we do see that power enable is connecting to the cpu and also to the ssd connector we're not going to worry about the cpu for now and we're not going to worry about the ssd connector for now so let's flip the board and we're going to look at those few components here we have a resistor and i think this one is empty by default and we have a resistor here and i just need to locate that component based on what i see on the board diagram so just like i thought one of them is empty by default we have this resistor right here and we have this one which is empty by default so power enable is this pin and this pin both of them are power enable so let's go ahead and check do we have 3.3 volts at the resistor and you can look at my multimeter look at this one side is 3.3 and the other side is reading 0.5 volts but how come i was not able to read 0.5 at power enable on this chip pin number two let me do this one more time and right now i'm reading 0.5 Let me disconnect power and measure the value of that resistor. It should be 100K. Meter in resistance mode. And let's check the value of this resistor. And we are reading 93, 94K. So I'm going to assume the resistor is good. Right now we have PP3V3 SO state at this point here. We have PP3V3 S3 state right here. And right now on power enable on both points, we are reading 0.2. Let me try to secure this resistor and see what happens. Maybe the resistor is not making a good connection. We're going to add some flux here. I just want to reflow that resistor and see if anything changes. All right. And same result, we are getting 0.2 volts. So we know the problem is not the resistor. We know the problem is not the connection between the resistor and the pad. Right now, a few things could be causing power enable to go down. It could be our CPU, or it could be one of those two chips that we have here. This or this. To be honest, the easiest way to go at this right now is to add another 100k resistor right here at the SO state we add another 100k resistor right here this is the SO state 3.3 volts will be passed to power enable and this is connecting with this and that will solve our problem so I think I'm gonna go that route Very nice. And let's see what happens now when we plug the charging cable and test for power enable. We're going to plug the charging cable and we're going to test for power enable. What do we have on power enable now? Okay. Maybe I can do this so you can see the multimeter. And right now we have 3.3 volts on power enable okay problem solved look at this we have 
3 volts on power enable. Great, that's it. The job is done. So let's go ahead and plug the board back on the laptop and test. Okay, so the screen is connected and all we have to do is plug the charging cable and see. Charging cable is plugged in and are we gonna see a folder logo or is the drive going to boot? I do not even know if there's an operating system on the customer's drive, but we're gonna wait and see. Right there. <laughs> right there. Laptop is working. Wow. Amazing. The customer is gonna be happy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.